Adam Sessler. Do not let this man hear you refer to yourself as a gamer. He's going to roll off of his scuffed mattress, permanently located directly on the floor, face looking like he got attacked by a powdered donut, and he's going to be angry on Twitter. I have uh, built my career on upsetting idiots. Yeah, uh, me too. Yeah. yeah. I now call them gamers mm. uh, because I'm not one anymore. <laughs> Adam Sessler isn't the only one who thinks this way, and I've seen this repeatedly in the last decade. There is a division that has occurred within the masses, and nobody seems to recognize this. I'm not talking about the left versus right culture war crap that always seems to come up. I'm talking about people neck deep in the industry, like the actual industry of games and journalists and other hyper close followers. A lot of these people have seemingly lost touch with the fact that there is an entirely other niche of game enjoyers that spawned around the same time that G4 started to sunset and when straightforward comedy and fun focused videos related to video games started to hit the internet. It's the reason why places like Kotaku seem to treat streamers like they're this foreign concept that they're only starting now finally to understand and how Hassan Piker seems to be the gamer of the millennium over in these places. But anyway, let's narrow this down because we are addressing Adam here. You need to realize that the language you use and what you think that you are saying is not actually what you are saying. If you are 20,000 leagues deep into the meta of game discussion, happen to socialize with just the right people that already lead you into this direction, then maybe you'll understand it. This loses most people. That's why I find so amazing is that as I'm insulting gamers, how many people are willingly taking the mantle of gamer? We're going to be doing our best here to try to be good faith and try to understand Adam. He was born on August 29th, 1973, placing him firmly into the Gen X category. Listening to him on the Biggest Problem in the Universe podcast, he mentions being a Gen X many times, and it's clear that he self-identifies with the stereotypes. A lot of people seem to forget that Gen X and older millennials went through a phase in culture where there was this whole idea that we were supposed to be shedding stereotypes and labels. Like, don't you dare put me in a box. You need to get to know me. I'll wear what I want. I'll do what I want to do. And I won't conform to any societal standards. You need to get to know me as a person. And this philosophy covered everything. If you lived through this, you'll see that the exact nuance of how this all went down flies in the face of today, where people often gravitate towards labels and want to associate and identify with ideas, ideologies, and groups. All across the spectrum, we see people engage with this more and more. This did not happen nearly as much in days gone by, especially when you're like me and not living in the middle of one of these big cities. Oh. I was a person who played games and reviewed them. <laughs> and you I don't even know what a gamer is. Well, that's I know. Look, I can identify a gamer from a mile away, but I could not even. I don't. Need, I don't bother with the definition. <laughs> You also need to realize that every small area experiences its own microculture that thrives and evolves in its own way. Every country, state, city, and friend group is going to have its own interpretation on matters. Here's an example. When I was a freshman in high school, I knew somebody over the internet that lived one state over. She was telling me about how punk music was taking over more than ever. It was getting really popular. Skateboarding was seeing a resurgence and the push towards a more progressive mindset was starting to set in. This was interesting to me because I didn't see anything like it. Then, Nearly a year later, everything that she was talking about was starting to seep in to my own local culture. It was like I had gotten a glimpse into the future, and now it was happening. The same types of music finally found their way over, skateboarding was cool again, and just so on. 
language and culture, even in the U.S., even just a few hours apart can be very different in different locations and can expand and grow at different rates. The world of video games is always moving, always changing, always evolving. But there's one constant. Welcome to X-Play. The center of the gaming universe. X-Play is television's only primetime show devoted entirely to video games. It is very easy to see that Adam Sessler, Gen Xer, rejected the term gamer when it first started to be used around the 2000s. In the early 2000s, you can finally admit to playing video games and wear a Dragon Ball t-shirt without being ostracized. But yeah, like I was saying, labels suck. Don't label me, man. Hell, I even agreed at the time. As I've grown older, I've changed my tune a bit. Everything is a balance. It's certainly important to be your own person and to be able to stand on your own two feet. This is integral. There should be a little bit of punk in all of us. But at the same time, running away from social constructs and running away from identifying with other people can be unhealthy. Let's pick an easy one, like Christmas. Just a religious, capitalistic Hallmark holiday, right? I mean, maybe, but it's these silly little traditions that help bring us together and reaffirm extended families and connections in this time where everyone is pushed and incentivized to move far away from each other, both physically and just sort of mentally. As we further separate, it's important to build communities with other people, even if it's just around silly traditions, hobbies, consumer interests even, or whatever. In the podcast, Vito at one point lends an olive branch to Adam and says that enjoying playing video games is a rather silly way to build a community after all. He kind of suggests that it's shallow and nothing related to ideology. And yeah, maybe, but so what? You can be critical on nearly anything in life. If someone has the sense of community with another group of people and that helps them in life or brings them joy, that's a good thing. If you take up a nerdy hobby like Dungeons and Dragons with some locals and meet at a game store, yeah, that's a ridiculous way to find your group, maybe, sure, but they can also become some of your greatest friends. This is especially true for people who might be in a point in their life where not everything is perfect yet. There's this thing called the nirvana fallacy, that if your solution to a problem isn't perfect, then it isn't worth doing or trying at all. I'm sure that there's a million manosphere videos or whatever they're called, out there telling you to hit the gym, start a crypto trading business, and that your friend situation and everything else will then just follow suit and sort itself out. Sure, there's some elements of truth in developing your body and sorting out your life, but that doesn't mean that you need to deploy yourself immediately into hustle culture, stop sleeping at night because you're always working, and not build bridges with others using the hobbies that you actually love. You can do all of these things, although I guess I don't know about crypto trading at this point. I'm not a financial advisor. I guess there's some risk there. But as I was saying, your relationships and identifications should be a network and a spectrum. Sometimes it just feels good to belong to something. Be healthy about it and you'll be fine. Now let's take a look at what Josephy has to say on the subject. But over time, This word has transcended all meaning, becoming washed up, overused, and frankly, painful whenever it comes in contact with your ears. Yeah, maybe for you, maybe in your circle, maybe even with some of the people I know, but not everywhere and not with everyone. There is a whole 10 minute video here about how people are running away, screaming from the word, except that's not really the case. I have friends that play video games, buy several games a year, do other strange nerd related that I don't even know about, but aren't deep in the meta and probably haven't written more than three YouTube comments in their life. They wouldn't be able to name three game journalists if a gun was pointed at their head. 
These people have no idea what I'm talking about when I ask them about how they feel about gamers. When I start to describe these little mini wars that have developed that just seem to go on endlessly on Twitter, they seem mind blown in the moment at all of the drama and then they fail to retain any of the details I've shared with them. And then the next time I bring it up, their mind has been completely wiped and they have no clue once again what I'm talking about. They don't even care enough to have an opinion on the word gamer. I already know that there will be a large number of people watching this very video wondering why I'm making a video on it. When you start spewing verbal garbage and trash gamers, especially when you give no context, it's these everyday people that are going to start wondering if they're the ones being insulted. They do some surface level analysis of the word, wonder if them being a person who plays games is the one that's being targeted. Then... They might even start to wonder why this guy that they used to watch on TV, perhaps they even used to enjoy watching him because he helped sort of bring video games into more acceptability and culture, is now seeming to crap on their hobby. It is safe to say that when the word gamer isn't said ironically, you can almost always assure yourself that it will be coming from somebody that is either over the age of 40 or knows nothing about games. Yes, exactly. Most people don't know much about gamers, even a lot of people who play them. For the millennials, gamer is a term that their mom probably has picked up by now. When a random non-gaming person, like maybe even a co-worker, in their 50s gives you a video game related present saying that they thought you would like it because they know you're a gamer. Are you really going to start with the, well, I'm not a gamer. I'm just a person who plays video games. A lot of the people who call themselves gamers are weird. That's not me. I have a balance in life. No, you won't. Or at least I hope you won't because that would be weird. Normies have No clue that in the thick of it that there are these little terminology wars going on. And if you start lecturing them, they're going to think you're just unappreciative of their gift. As a person who plays video games, you are a gamer. Any further classification is pedantic. And spoiler, there is absolutely no distinction amongst the normies between gamer and person who plays video games here and there. You will sound insane if you try to start explaining this. So if you have a DS and if you're a retro gamer like me, that's the one to get. The DS system is becoming the biggest system for retro gamers, you know? Following the original death of G4, a new culture emerged on YouTube. Guess what? In this new culture, which G4 was a part of pioneering, the word gamer was acceptable. It wasn't touted around as anything particularly special, but it became a descriptor and people used it. Someone's a new school gamer, retro gamer, just a gamer, whatever. I was watching some old school screw attack videos just to sort of plunge myself into the sort of mindset from years gone by. Screw attack was basically the de facto baseline style of online video game videos from the late 2000s and early 2010s. Stuttering Craig did not have to take an ironic pause or hit hard every time the word gamer came out of his mouth. No, it was a natural part of the vernacular and it rolled off the tongue like any other normal word. Within this group of people, gamer was a normalized word. It was a fine word. These people didn't necessarily pay attention to the California slash New York game journalist meta on rhetoric, and their mind didn't automatically spring to being racist in Call of Duty lobbies, political extremist pipelines, and hating women. They think that some outsider, hoity-toity, elitist is trying to redefine language and tell them that they should feel bad for using this term in the past. They do a mental review of the word, feel like there's nothing wrong with it, feel like it just means person who plays games, and think that whoever's getting worked up over the existence of the word needs to rethink their own life. 
in my opinion, the last thing we need to do is start downplaying the hobby of games once again like it's just a dirty, shameful secret. As long as people are still accepting of watching, you know, dopey television, sports, and everything else, video games are just fine. The word has become the go-to staple word to try and appeal to the kids, with corporate businessmen plastering it all over tat, paraphernalia, and God forbid, clothing. What was a corporate smelly push yesterday becomes tomorrow's accepted culture. You can see this easy in rock music. Slightly before my time, at least before I could really appreciate these nuances in music, Green Day released their third album, Dookie, in 1994. Punk rock fans were furious that they left their roots and departed from the sounds of Kerplunk, which was their second album. Green Day then built an entirely new fan base off of the success of Dookie, and they became one of the biggest biggest bands in the world. The new fans, most of them at least, had no idea that there was ever a controversy. Then, in 2004, the band released their seventh album, American Idiot. Again, controversy. But the new fans grew up with their new music and had no idea that the previous generation of fans ever got worked up, let alone that even before Dookie, that there was another group of fans. I see this today with Blink-182 and Avril Lavigne. Us millennials especially for Avril Lavigne, thought that they were sellout corporate knockoff trash. But now here they are with their latest resurgence and people are ecstatic to see Avril Lavigne in a TikTok with Tony Hawk. If this makes people happy, then that's fine. If people are getting a kick out of Skater Boy going viral again, they don't need me making a video freaking out about how that video was just pandering trash at the time when it came out. No real music fans liked it. It was just really young girls that seemed to get a kick out of the song. And that Avril Lavigne only pretended to dress like a punk and played the same watered down pop music as everyone else at the time. That Avril Lavigne even later crapped on dressing like a punk and tried to disown it before now, I guess, readopting it. What I'm trying to say here is that an entire generation was born into a world where the term gamer was on shirts, posters, toys, collectibles, and other crap that they bought or were gifted. Even if it has its roots in a little bit of corporate culture, it became their niche. It was embraced. I know family members born in the 2000s who buy a few games a year, put this stuff up on their doors and walls, and I can confirm to you that they have absolutely no familiarity with a world before gamer was a term, that there was ever an initial pushback, that game journalists are hung up on the word, or that there is any controversy surrounding it at all. You know, if I were to dare start talking about these things, their eyes would glaze over and it would become another session of old man Chris talking. They just want to enjoy their things, the identity that they've carved out for themselves. And if they manage to catch wind of Adam Sessler shitting on gamers, these people feel shit on. I'll watch a movie that I know I'm going to hate just so I can hate it afterwards. Um, yeah. There's like a there's a lot of people, and I think that's a legitimate way to consume oh, yeah. media. I mean, look at the end of the day, a view is a view is a view is a view. Yeah, it's it, it's it's like you know, I mean, there is a point where in order to keep ratings going, if I needed to plead myself a little, okay, let's do it. Uh, and that's why I think people were like, we're so, I was so shocked how shocked people were when I was like uh, when I was being blunt on on Twitter and saying, uh, yeah. You know, I was, I was, I was, I was doing it. Like I was being paid by G four. My interest was in the ratings. Back to Adam Sessler once again. I don't even know if he is truly acting in good faith. Is this just some sleazy attempt to stay relevant by harping on something that he knows will generate controversy, or is it a post rationalization and an attempt to save face by claiming that he's just a troll after all? If someone claims to be a clown, how can you ever ridicule them? if they can always fall back on how they were just joking. It's hard to say, although Adam does seem rather deep into it at this point. 
So here's another term that managed to catch on, based. I threw that word in as a joke in my Garfield cart video, and I'm not sure if everyone even realized that I was trying to use the word ironically. Oh, well. Just like that in sus, there are people I know that treated these words like just disgusting foreign objects. Eventually, then they started to use them jokingly, and now they are using them legitimately, I think. It's bizarre, man. You know, I went through the same thing with, oh, owned. Oh, you're owned. Oh, he got pwned. All the millennials will remember that term or those terms and how we made fun of them at first and then started to use them. It happens all the time with every generation, year after year. So, yeah, you know, with my resurgence, whatever nerd shit I'm into, I've decided I'm just going to own whatever it is. I know full well that when I make a top 10 out of 2022 video game video, when I put the ninth title in an obscure JRPG series at number one on a channel that found a little bit of notoriety at yelling at bad video games, I know that's going to put some people off, but it's still my number one game. I know that when I talk about an anime convention in my Garfield cart review, that the anime haters are going to freak out, but that's just whatever. You know, you're either on board with, you know, what this is or you're not. I don't, you know, I'm making this video. I don't even really self-refer to myself as a gamer. This isn't like, you know, a word that I use when I'm introducing myself. But when someone says, oh, hey, Chris, you're a gamer, right? I don't just go into lecture mode. I just roll with it. You know, perhaps I'll provide some nuance. Like, yeah, I like to play retro games, but I'm not freaking out or running away. But I do know people who do try to start downplaying video games or start whispering when video games come up in a public setting. And it's like, man, I know what you're doing. I know what you do in your free time. I know about them JRPGs. And it just comes off as sad. Some of the most successful and happy people I know will perfectly own whatever the hell it is that they're into. It's okay if you like games, anime, tabletop, whatever. Of course, be well-rounded, but otherwise, you're fine. That said, it's time to hit that like button, boys, and start screaming at me in the comments. Also, follow me on Twitter at NeverChris. This is your call to action. We must grow the empire. As the empire grows... It cannot be ignored. Anyway, see you next time. Thanks for watching.